Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ron with Propelio. Uh, today we've got Kristen Gertz in the studio from Capricorn, and I'm not centered. I feel like I'm so far away from you. Today we're going to be do something special. Uh, Kristen was did a couple of our presentations at a couple of our events, and everybody's like, "We want more! We want more! We want more!" <laughs> so here's more. So with further ado. What are we talking about? We are uh, talking about an exit strategy for when you set up your owner finance mortgage notes. Mm -hmm. And everybody, if you're a real estate investor out there, yes, I know we all want to keep every rental we pick up and every owner finance note, but you never know what's going to happen down the road. Okay. And so you might need to sell your note. And so what I'm teaching you is a strategy to actually be able to pick up as many of these notes as possible with no debt and keep cash flow and your down payments. So to be clear though, it's not going to be, I do this, I do that, sell, sell, sell. It's you could do this too by using this strategy, correct? Correct. Because we correct. at Propelio are passionate about none of that hard this is sell not, BS. This is not anything that... Um, it's not rocket science? It's, you know, I uh, teach people how to do this because I would love to have an army of owner finance investors out there uh -huh. you know, bringing me these if in case they ever wanted to sell a note. So your motivation in teaching people how to do this is, hey, bring me deals. Yeah, I would love to have them creating out there creating product for me. So basically what I'm hearing is if you're turning in for the very first time, if you've got notes and you want to sell them, Kristen Gertz is your, your gal? I'm your gal. Okay, yeah, well let's, gal. let's dig into it. So you've got a presentation here. It's only seven slides, so I feel like we have a lot of room to, uh, we do. to play with. We do, and if anybody has any questions, you know, bring them in at any time. I'm totally good with that. Um, is this first slide up? I don't know. Uh, it is now. It is now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with how to create the best note possible. Um, Before we get too far. Yeah. Can we define note just because sure, 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 we sure, do sure. have intermediate, we do have sure, expert, sure, sure. we do have brand new people have no clue. Right. Um, when you are creating an owner finance mortgage note, um, this is where you're going to buy a property, you are going to fix it up, and instead of selling it um, on the retail market, you are going to go find a buyer and you're going to sell it on, ter on terms. So you're going to take a down payment and you're going to take monthly payments for however long you decide. Mm -hmm. um, we good with that? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So when we're starting out, um, you are going to have, when you're creating the best note possible, number one thing, number one thing you're going to do is have a minimum of 10% down. Okay. So why a minimum of 10%? Uh, minimum of 10% down shows that your buyer has skin in the game. I have done it um, over the past 10 years. I've originated hundreds of notes personally. and. When I started out, I thought, okay, I'm, you know, it's going to be hard to get somebody who has ten or twenty thousand dollars. So I was taking people that had basically a rental deposit with fifteen hundred, and inevitably the majority of those defaulted. But when you take somebody who has ten percent down, this is this is something that they've been saving for most of their lives, and the likelihood is is that that note will continue performing and you will not get it back. So basically it's the whole skin in the game type skin thing? Skin in the game. Because if they get skin in the game, they don't want to... That's wanna, true. They're, they not, wanna, they're not going to lose it. They're, they're not, not going to give up the game? Exactly. They're not going to risk not paying their mortgage and being foreclosed on. Okay. So the next one is uh, low loan to value. Um, do not oversell this house. Okay, that is, and I know that goes in, goes in the face of every other owner finance guru out there teaching. You never want to oversell the house because let's say six months or 12 months down the road, you decide you need to sell this thing. Mm -hmm. If you need to sell this thing, it can't be at 100% of value because the collateral for that mortgage note, <laughs> the collateral for that mor mortgage note would, um, would not be enough if the note goes bad. You could, couldn't sell that house. And if you take back the house after the note goes bad, you couldn't sell that house and get back the money that you paid for the note. So again, you need to make sure that your LTV or loan to value is sitting at a max of about 80 for what you would sell. Okay. 
real quick, just because I like to be stupid, loan to value, five seconds, because not everybody knows what it is, but I just right. want to make sure. So obviously loan or your mortgage note. So when you're sitting with your mortgage note value, okay, the value of the asset that that loan is on, mm -hmm. let's say that that house is worth $100,000. Then you want a good loan to value, which would be maybe max 80% or max $80,000 on the face of that note. Right. So that would be loan to value would be 80% LTV would be $80,000 on a $100,000 house. But here's the thing is like, and maybe I'm skipping ahead, maybe I'm falling backwards, maybe I wasn't paying attention at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know one of your strategies not to give you a pitch, but I'm gonna, like you're like, I can, I pay more than anybody. I pay 90%, I, I pay 95%. Like, how is that, why is that? Because if you're throwing out 80%, obviously maybe that's an industry standard for notes. So, or what is the industry standard? Correct. Um, so the way I buy notes is I will buy one or 40 or however many from individual investors. Then I package those up and I sell them to hedge funds. Mm -hmm. My fund buyers, they know that the max they want to see on an LTV is 80%. Anything less than 80% completely, I, I have to start discounting that note. So yeah, right now I'm paying and I try to always pay 88 to 92% of that face value of the note. Mm. But if we start to go into, oh, it's an 85% LTV now, I'm gonna take off a point for every bit that it's over 80. If we hit, if we hit actually hit 100% of LTV, I'm not buying it. I will just pass on it. For, for the 100%? Yeah, anytime, well, and, and I've had, I've had notes um, in the past six months that I've seen 167% when I got an appraisal on it. People have, you know, no shame in selling a house for literally twice as what it's worth on, on okay. payments. Okay, yeah, so what you're saying is like, when you, so if the house is really worth 100, there's that sketch game of, oh, well, I can get 20,000 more. No, because, they, yeah. Because they can't, they can't they qualify, can't get a real house. they can't go out, and they can't go just buy any house they want, they gotta buy what I have, so I'm gonna sell it for $20,000 more, they're going right. to give me $20,000 down. Well, that note now is sitting at 100% loan to value. Right. Also, I mean, most people don't realize this, but to sell a house, even if you're the homeowner, it's going to cost you 8 to 10%. Mm -hmm. So anytime you move, it costs you about 10%. So if you have a house that you owe 100% of its value on that you can sell it for, let's say it's in perfect condition, you're still going to write a check for 10% mm -hmm. at, at the closing table. And a lot of people can't do that. So, so it, if, if I hear this right, as a note buyer, and when, and I'm not saying everybody does this, but you hear people talk about doing this all the time, where like with that example we we're just talking about, where the house is worth 100, but they can sell it for 120, they get the 20 down, the note is for 100, but yet the house is worth it's 100. only 100 worth 100. Yeah. And as a note buyer, you still got to have because the skin in the game has already been given away to somebody else. Correct. So if I'm buying that note, the most the most I'm still going to buy, pay for it is 90% of 80% LTV. Right. So, you know, your it, once it's at 100%, I, I usually just pass mm -hmm. because I'm like, well, that's going to fail. And I don't want something that fails. Right. Um, I'm not in the business of holding property. I'm in the business of lending money. So I have a horrible habit of taking a tangent and going so far away, but I know we have slides. So, so let's go back to the slides. And then also, if you have questions, this is a live stream. So please feel free to jump in. Um, this is much different than like when we do it on stage yeah. because you do have opportunity to ask questions and whatnot. So, and they only give me seven minutes on stage and I usually go over that. I steal from other people. It, shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> that. Okay. I hate this computer. So now that we're, uh, yeah, so good down payment, low LTV, again, another way because once the homeowner finds out, oh my gosh, I paid way too much for this house, mm -hmm. people just walk away from that stuff. You know, I, sometimes they just don't pay for six months and then they stick the keys in the mailbox and they're gone. Um, high interest rate, 9 to 11%. Um, I was on the phone with uh, my good friend Sarah Montez over at Texas Pride Lending. Mm -hmm. um, she is an RMLO. We will talk about that in a few minutes. But I asked her, hey, I'm going on Propelio. What's Prime at this morning? And mm. she said, for 30 years, Prime is at four and a half. She goes, for 15 years, Prime is at four. And I said, 
this is, and th this is why you use an RMLO for these things. Your RMLO will get you the highest interest rate possible. So that means that you're going to add six and a half points or six and a half percent to that prime rate. And that is the highest you can go for a qualified mortgage. And, and um, what's interesting about that is like you call up Sarah and she can pull out that information really quickly. Yeah. And me, I'd be like, okay, Google, where? Yeah. Is this no, a real I, number? You know, I, I no? love it. I love it. I get her on the phone this morning first thing and I'm like, what's prime? What's prime at today? What, right. what can these things be sold at? This is important because your loan, when, when your RMLO does this, they will lock in your borrower at a specific rate. Mm -hmm. And they will get you the highest to keep it a qualified mortgage. I don't want to buy non-qualified mortgages. Those, and, and there's a whole other uh, you know, can of worms that opens up when you go above what your RMLO says you can. It now becomes a hope loan. You have to send the borrower to credit counseling. Mm -hmm. um, they get told 20 billion times, don't do this because you know, you're paying way too much for this loan. But I want a house. But I want a house. So high interest rate right now is nine to 11 percent. 11% would be today. So you've got four and a half on a 30 year fixed mortgage. You're gonna add six and a half to that. Mm -hmm. That tells you that the max for a qualified mortgage at today's rate is 11%. You know, and there's a lot of people out there going, oh my God, I can't believe anyone would pay 11. Anything less than nine right now. Um, for the money I borrow, I'm, I'm prime plus one. Um, I know that by the end of the year, I'm gonna be up at I'm going to be up at, uh, you know, six, seven percent. Mm -hmm. If we go into interest rates, if you do a historical interest rate search, back in the early 2000s, we were up at eight and nine percent. For the prime? For, or for the high? For prime. And then what for was the prime. high on top of that? High on top of that would be 6.5. So, I mean, you're so talking like 14, about 14, 15 percent loans, which people say is hard money. Um, I remember back when 7% was free money. Right. That was free money. And people are all bent out of shape about, you know, oh my God, I can't ever charge my borrower 9%. If you come to me with a loan less than 9% right now, I've got to discount it. Because 8%, 8% in very short amount of time will probably be actually below prime or right at prime. And then at that point, you might as well just be you know, a bank versus an owner finance person. That's correct. Now, it still doesn't mean that it's a bad investment. I right. mean, we all want to get, you know, eight, nine, ten percent Well, yeah, because if inflation returns, is, if inflation's five, six percent or whatever it is nowadays, yeah. I have no clue, but yeah, you, years ago when I was in economics class, it was six percent. Uh, and if you're getting seven percent, technically you're making money. You're, you really are. I mean, and so it's not, it doesn't become a bad investment. Right. But at the same time, you know, the way I borrow money to, to buy this stuff is that it's always fluctuating. Well, and then also it's the whole, the whole point of doing owner finance is, and the reason you're able to, and this is obvious, uh, bear with me here, <laughs> is like the whole reason you are finance and the reason there is a market for that is because it's a higher risk asset. Correct. Therefore you can price in for that higher risk. And that's why you do and, it. And I, and I hate saying this, but I mean, owner finance in industry, we were the answer to subprime. Subprime went away, those subprime loans, you right. hear them, you know, and basically when I'm buying this stuff, yeah, you know, it's, it's MBS, it's mortgage-backed securities, right. it's basically what this is. So none of it ever went away, but, you know, I believe that, you know, funds and banks have got a lot savvier than they were 10 years ago, and, you know, having the higher interest rate really makes it worthwhile. You know, if you're sitting at a 4% interest rate, you know, who wants to buy that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I finally figured out this computer. Good. Well, I mean, it's about time. I know. <laughs> I'm like, why won't it do what it needs only, to do? You know. We're only like 15, 15 minutes, minutes into it. it. It's okay. So, uh, next one. Realistic PITI. PITI. I'm going to go for it. Please do. Yes. PITI stands for Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. And everyone and their dog should know that by now, but you know what I'm going to do every time it comes up? You're going to ask. I'm going to point it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you would. So, um, and that's good because I usually I use all of these well, little things all the time, you know and I think people know what I'm talking about. But that's the problem about in real estate is you go to a networking event, you watch a Propelia video, uh, you have a conversation. Everybody knows the acronyms. Everybody knows the lingo. But then you have that one person who's new to the group who may they may have all the money, 
but they don't want to say anything and they don't want to do the deal because they well, don't want to look stupid. Right. And it's not like so. I'm it's not like I'm sitting up here talking about points and, and basis points and you know, yeah. all of that, which is totally gonna lose well, the whole audience. Is, yeah, yeah, you th start throwing <laughs> basis points, people will immediately assume you so know what the fuck you're talking excuse me, you know what the hell you're <laughs> yeah. talking about. But all it is is a, another fraction of a it's percentage. A tenth of a point. Yeah, yeah. So or anyway, a tenth of a percentage. There's your nugget for the day. Yeah, there you, a there you are. A basis point is a tenth <laughs> of a, whatever. Anyway, go ahead. So realistic PITI, that is the complete monthly payment. Uh, I also like to throw an HOA. If there's an HOA payment there, mm -hmm. I'm throwing that into PITI as well. The reason for that is, it, one, always collect your escrows. A lot of you know, a lot of investors, owner finance investors, they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. I get it. But if the loan goes bad, it's nice to know that you have an account that has all of the property taxes and insurance money. So when you say collect the escrows, you mean yes. have a separate account where all that money goes to that separate where it's correct utilized for that separate correct. whatever. And, and you're your third party or your third party licensed note servicer will take care of that. So you're saying August REI? Okay, August REI. We'll do that for I, me. I do. I do love Amy Sayer over at August REI. Got to give another shout I out. I like to her Margaret. too, but she never says hi anymore. Oh my gosh, she's probably listening right now. Maybe. <laughs> hey, Amy, if you're watching right now, drop a link to your company or whatever so people can reach out to you that that would be great anyway. um so she is my she is my all-time i think she's in, in the dfw area she's everybody's go-to um and she should be yeah. because i've tried five different servicers before her um and this is i mean we're talking back in 2012 mm -hmm. and she's begging me for she's like why don't you give me your loans to service and finally i just dropped every single file on her desk and went to europe for six weeks um, like two days later, and mm -hmm. I just said, here, handle this, it's yours. Um, and hands down, the best business decision I've ever made. Because all of a sudden I realized, I don't have anything to do. So the nugget there is, whether you're in the DFW market or any other market, make sure you rely on a quality, good servicer. Yes. Um, vet them, go to, how would you vet one? I mean, just because this is a neutral conversation for us, we don't care. So there's a lot of them out there. Right. One. Go to go to the licensing website and make sure that they're licensed. They're not all licensed. There's people out there just collecting payments. You mean I got to do work more than just say who's good? Like yeah, seriously. And this is for anybody. If you're yeah. you know you're picking out a licensed third party note servicer, go 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 see if they're licensed. You would be shocked. There's some operating in DFW right now that mm -hmm. aren't licensed. But like okay, so say I'm in Omaha. How other than just checking to see if they have a license, and there's five companies that have a license, how do I mean is it just so a reputation thing? There's a reputation, yes. And some of these companies have been around for years. Um, some people will tell you fee wise. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you August seems a little more expensive up front, but they're my pit bulls. Mm -hmm. You know, my um, I think their overall default rate, which don't quote me on this because I haven't asked for, I don't know a couple months, I think it's 1.86%. That is their default rate. That means that somebody missed a 30, like is 30 days late. Out of, I don't know what they've got under right, right. under management, and they're managing probably several thousand loans, right. and their default rate is 1.86%. That's extraordinary. So, so, that sounds good. So, you know, ask what their default rate is. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're licensed. Um, look, at, look at what you get. So, very few of them report to credit. Mm -hmm. August REI reports to credit, which is rare. Um, they also will make phone calls all the time. You don't pay for that. They'll send out 20 day notices. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things that other companies will nickel, nickel and dime you for. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, he dropped a link to August and then he pointed out that they are national. So if you are watching national, uh, reach out to them. They can help Yeah, out. and they're not in every state, but if you make it worth their while, they will get licensed in that state. Mm -hmm. um, they'll get registered. I know that they just picked up Florida, I think. I don't know. I forget what she said. Mm -hmm. Anyways. So, realistic PITI. We'll get back to that. Yeah, let's get back yeah, to this. <laughs> get, back to, get back to the slides. So, realistic PITI should be close to whatever the rent is. So, right. remember, you're taking these buyers out of the rental market. And they can, they know what their neighbor's house is renting for. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, a house three doors down, which is almost identical to theirs, is going to come on. If they have PITI at fifteen hundred bucks a month, and they find out that they can 
rent a house for a thousand dollars a month right that's gonna make them think why am I doing all this and paying for repairs you know and you know it seems like you know I'm just overpaid for this thing so right. these are all the ways to you know the things you should be looking at when the note is created to make sure that it continues to perform right and then real quick this is a side tangent, but just because some people don't know about it, the, the whole 1% rule when you're talking about rentals, I know this has nothing to do with this topic, but the other day somebody had, no, it was on a Facebook thing. Yeah, 1% uh, rule when you're doing, uh, when you're a landlord or rentals is basically, uh, if you're looking at doing a rental, your rental should be 1% of what the ARV is. And a quick way to figure out what the ARV is, is one whatever your rent is, that should be 1% of the ARV. So if your house is rents for $1,000 a month, it should be a $100,000 house. If it's a $100,000 house, it should rent for $1,000. So quick side note. Yeah, no, and it's a good side note. Yeah. Although I remember the days when it was like, you know. More. It was more. It was like 120. Back when you were 12. Yeah, well, you know, been doing it for a while. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today's transaction example, we have got a sales price of 100,000. So easy math, everybody can do it. Mm. Down payment. $10,000, usually it's a minimum of 10%, okay? So that's why we're saying 10. Um, that, and I can also put in my first and second lien, which is what I'm talking about today. Um, can you get 20% 20, 20 down? Yes, and if you can get 20% down, get 20% down. Um, you know, you're basically walking with all of your cash up front, which mm -hmm. is al always a good thing. Leaving financed, $90,000. So with our rule that we can only go to 80% for an exit strategy, all right? So this is, do you have to sell your notes? No, if you wanna keep them all and you have the mm -hmm. ability to do that, keep your notes. One thing that I'm telling, these really work for if you're using money. If it's not your own money and you're borrowing money to do this, money is finite. So you've got to sell it fast, pay it off mm -hmm. and churn it. And so if you can keep turning that capital that you're borrowing, right. your investors are gonna love you. Any of them will. Um, you will be able to do more loans faster and you still are accumulating cash flow and we'll show that in a few minutes. Um, so at the 80, 80, 20 or 80, 10, 10 model, your first lien is gonna go to 75,000. Why did I pick 75,000? Ah, makes it even more attractive, okay? Mm -hmm. In this case, didn't need to go all the way to 80. 75% is even better. Most of the stuff that I buy and that I see, it's been around four or five years. So my LTVs are great. You know, they're 50 and 60% LTV. Does that mean you're gonna get a higher price for your note? No, because there's not really, if I'm already paying, you know, 88 to 92%, there's not really much room for me to go because mm -hmm. my margins are so small. Um, but it will, you know, you can't go over and have a really bad LTV, but as far under as you can will make that note more desirable um, because the risk is less if it defaults. So at 9% interest, and yes, I'm using 9% because 9% is still common, but it's way low for today. Yeah, I was going to say, it like, is. how old are these slides? These are not very old. But you just do 9% to... I do 9%. I, mean, I, You know, most of what I've sold, even in the last year, has been at 10%. Mm -hmm. We're now up at 11%. Um, I use 9% to show... It can still be done. It can still be done. You can still make money at this. And I can, I can still pay 88 to 92% for 9% loans. Um, do I anticipate that in a year? Probably, but it's going to be tight. You know, it might go to nine and a half or mm -hmm. nine point nine before you know you have to start taking discounts. So, but again, I do I do the numbers at nine just so people can see that it does in fact work. Right. So your first lien seventy five thousand at nine percent for thirty years gives you six hundred and three dollars forty seven cents a month principal and interest. This mm -hmm. does not include taxes and insurance because your taxes and insurance are a cost. That's not anything to do with your cash flow or your profit. You never see that. So the second lien then is 15,000 at 9% interest for 15 years. Why did I switch that up for 15 to 30? Because literally you can do, you can do anything you want here. Right, and, and one thing before you even explain what's going on with this is I love the fact that you're pointing out that you could take 
you know, your owner finance note and then turn it into two liens. Correct. And I'm assuming what you're going to do with this situation is sell that first lien to Capricorn Mortgage. Capricorn Mortgage Investments, Investments would love Christian to buy Gers. that. Yeah. But then hold on that second lien. Correct. Because then you're just getting, why not get a little, little money Correct. off your work? Yes, you made you made probably the bulk of your investment back on the, the down payment itself. And then that second is just gravy. Correct. Or whipped cream or cherry or Correct. whatever you want to call Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so that's what I love to teach investors, especially new investors. On really the investment of one investor, maybe he'll, inv he'll invest with you a couple hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. You can get that rolling and have an enormous amount of cash flow in really a year. Right. Um, because yeah, $152 doesn't sound like a month. You know, it's going to cover, you know, most people's Starbucks bu budgets. But when you multiply that by 10 right. or 20, you know, $3,000 a month, that's a lot. That's and, you're, and that's not even taking into place the down payment no. that you took or what you actually sold the second, the first lien for. Correct. You do 20 of these, well, that's $200,000 in cash plus Whatever you over sold through, oh, well, yeah, that's, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in cash plus three thousand dollars a month and three thousand dollars a month you know that would be a, enable somebody to maybe so walk you, from what their do you, job i mean i know without i know you got weather slides but on a first lien 75 percent note at nine percent for 30 years what are you buying that at uh on the first lien sure on something like that i'm gonna pay 90 percent 90 percent of the 75,000. so was it like 68 uh, i think out? it's 67.5 I don't, I don't 67 oh no it comes up on a slide oh yeah, you know, you're getting ahead. That's all good. That's, that's what I do. So legal aspects. Um, use professionals. Yeah. You have to. And, and really, and if, you're, if you have an idea that this is the method, you know, you want to use this method, okay, I need to see an RMLO packet. If you don't use an RMLO because you decide, you know, it's too expensive and right. for whatever reason, guess what? The borrower pays for it. Right. There's no reason not to use it. Um, so if you don't use it, Oh yeah, I'm gonna discount. So you're not gonna get 90. You might have gotten 90, but now you're gonna get 88. Attorney, close with a title company. Right. Um, there are horror stories. Been people doing this by themselves. They don't run title, and I'm going, what are you doing? So we've had notes that we've had to walk away from at the table because we couldn't get title clear on them. Like you know, they've had this. There was a lien from a city. There was this one. It was Les Paul. Mm -hmm. A lien from a city that originally, 15 years ago, was I don't know, five or six hundred dollars. But with all the compounded interest and fees and not paying it, it was something like twelve thousand dollars. And there wasn't enough in right. there. And the guy's like, okay, I'm just gonna keep this. Right. You know still bad for the homeowner and the city could come in and take that but you know well, real quick just because we're talking about professionals and you can apply that to the Everything. entire gambit of real estate investing because your job as a real estate investor should be to find more deals find money for those deals and spend time fishing with your kids yeah absolutely so it, not, and there, and not there's running a, your rehabs not collecting rent, not kicking no. people out, hire other people to do that for you. Yeah, absolutely. And people, people, you know, think when they get into this that they've got to be like laying tile and stuff. And yeah. I, and by the way, I'm guilty too. I did yeah, it. I can, it, it, I can it, refinish hardwood floors. I've done that. Yeah. Like if your first step after buying a house is going to Walmart and buying some overalls. Yeah. No, 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 Get no, your no. money back. Yeah. Don't put the overalls on. Yeah. Yeah. Buy be an investor. Shorts. If you're an investor, be an investor. Right. You know, do I have realtors? Yes. I'm not a licensed realtor. I, you know, I use, I use professionals yeah, for that. Yeah, we had, I mean, almost a year ago, we had Blake Johnson in here from Finish Touches, yeah. and one of his things was, you know, one of his, we did a, a tip video pro tip, he's like, if you're gonna be an investor, be an, be an investor. investor. You know, leave it to other people to do those. So again, I know that's a little side topic, but it's really not, so use professionals. Yeah, no, it's great, yeah. Like on this, when you're doing the, owner, the notes, use the RMLO, use the attorneys, use the note servicers. So, um, and attorneys. You know, I love my attorney. Um, I use Teresa Myers mm -hmm. over at um, the title company in Garland. She is phenomenal. Um, I use her four notes. Um, oh, and you know, if I buy something, she's getting that now too. Right. But I mean, she's awesome. Um, not all attorneys are created equal. Right. And owner finance docs, everybody needs to learn how to read a closing statement 
And if you don't know how to read a closing statement, ask. Ask anybody. Call me, you know, and I'll help you go through it. You would be surprised at all of the errors that are on these loan documents. Um, you know, and I'm not going to I'm not going to badmouth any attorneys right. around around DFW, but we've had I've seen some stuff. The most egregious error and I love telling people this story was in the main block of a note. So this is this is this is the thing. This is the thing that you're selling. This is your you know, this is the most valuable piece of paper. And in the block of a note that explains exactly when the when the payments start, when they stop, and how much they are per month, the principal and interest payments are per month. The amount was 1002.007. I want to know how you get three numbers to the right of that decimal point. Right. And nobody catches it. Yeah, because uh, uh, if you know, if, oh, you, and by if the you didn't go to school, <laughs> a dot and a comma are different meanings in numerical I don't even know how formats. you get that you're you're what we're talking thousands of a thousands of a dollar it's now like instead of a, <laughs> instead of a hundred thousand dollars you're talking about a hundred dollars a hundred no 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 this was the monthly payment oh okay. one thousand two dollars and seven thousandths so of a dollar so they're doing the gas station math yeah Literally, and, and I don't know how nobody catches that. Plus, when it was written out, it was eight hundred and twenty-four dollars. I, I will say this: so like, it didn't match at all. Regardless, if you're hiring a professional, and you know, a couple of shout outs to people in the in that we like. We we like the Matt Acox, we like the Scott Horns, the Teresa Teresa Myers, Teresa Myers. So these yeah. are your three owner finance I note love you, attorneys. Teresa. Is <laughs> trust but verify. It's like oh. you can trust that they are doing their job, but read the documents. I I will have to say I. I really do love the stuff coming out of Scott Horn. I mm. do love his documents. Yeah, his documents that's what we use. are his documents are really great. But but again though, like at the title company on all your HUDs, whether you're doing a fix and flip, whether you're doing a, a wholesale, whether you're doing a note, you might use the same title person, the same attorneys, the same everything all the time. Yeah. And you can trust them and you can love them, but you need to verify. And and just read them. Because they might just mess up. You yeah. never know. Um I've seen deeds of trust that were, you know, supposed to be 67,000 and they were 667,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, that stuff has to be corrected. Right. We have to do affidavits. We have to check we have to track down borrowers. Because remember this stuff was closed 2, 3, 5 years earlier. Right. Nobody's caught this stuff and now I want to buy it. Well, I have to go through every line, which I do. I have a legal assistant who does this for me cuz right. always hire a professional. Um, but you know, you have to read through every line of these documents and fix any of these corrections on there. And I will say this. And that costs money. <laughs> Everything costs money. If I see a bunch of garbage documents, I mean, I'm going to, that's going down. You should always trust but verify. And then here's the cool thing about doing that. When you catch your, your buddy attorney, your buddy title company, your buddy whatever, where they made an accident, where they made an error, and you don't hold them to the fire and you don't sue them and you don't do all these things and you just subtly point out, hey, you missed this lien on the closing, but it's okay, we'll figure it out. Right. They're gonna love you more. No, and, and you that's know, what and you want. You want this is a relationship game, you want the love. Yeah, absolutely. And anybody who does business with me, I mean, be cool. I mean, yeah. there's no reason to be a jerk I, in I'm, this I'm business mess, whatsoever. I gotta mess up your your video that you want for later. The key <laughs> thing is don't be a dick. You know, in this industry, you gotta be nice, you gotta be sweet. Uh, yes, you can be firm, and but it is such a reputation-based thing that don't be a dick. Because if you are and you're a dick to the wrong person, oh my God. you're gonna be skewered alive. Quick tangent, there was a guy yesterday who called out Will Crozier for, you know, screw you, blah, 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 and Will posted it up. He immediately, because he had like, I don't know, several hundred mutual friends, all of them started trolling this guy. <laughs> and his profile went from public to private very quickly. Really? Only because he pissed off, well, he didn't even piss him off, he just said some shit about the wrong guy. So if you, just don't be a dick. Yeah, no, Just no, realize no. reputation is, again, finite. It's, <laughs> it is, and it's a small world. Yeah. I mean, Dallas Fort Worth, oh my gosh. Yeah. So your name, quick tangent, your name, but it's your name gets around yeah. really fast and you know, it's it's over once you do it. Yeah, that. exactly, Miranda. Word of mouth will kill a business faster than anything. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. Um, so attorney, make sure and read your closing documents. Mm -hmm. It's just good business anytime, whether you're buying a house that you're going to or setting up your own finance transaction. Um, the attorney, by the way, everybody asks me, well, how do I set up two notes? 
you hire an attorney yeah. and you go, this is what I want done. Yeah, you don't know have to know. Again, in, in real estate, especially new, because we do our masterminds, we yeah. do our events. People yeah. are like, how do I do this, how do this? I'm like, I don't know, I just know it gets done and then I hire a Kristen, I hire an Amy, I hire a Scott, I hire a Matt to do it for me. Correct, absolutely. So anyway. Yes. And then third party note servicer. This is really important. These do it yourselfers, that is the most ridiculous thing you can possibly do. Because I guarantee you, I don't care who it is, I don't care how long they've been doing it, they're doing it wrong. Right. You have to send out mortgage statements once a month. Are you doing that? Right. Are you doing your IRS reporting in January? I doubt it. At the end of the day, it's like if, if when you hire somebody else to do it for you, if there's ever a case to be sued, guess who's getting sued? They are, not you. Not you. Not so. you. So again, it, take the liability off yourself. Right. Um, not to mention, you know, do I love August REI? I love August REI because I know I send them an email, they hit one button, and they give me this, per, these professional reports come out. You know, that would be one thing that you would do if you're trying to vet a note servicer because some of the reports that I get from these other ones, I'm like, what is this? Did right. you just, are you doing this on Excel? Right. You know, and so, a lot of these bigger ones like August, um, there's a couple out of Houston, San Antonio, they use, and I know that this, the software's like $50,000. You know, that's an investment into these, right. into these companies and they, you know they're doing good business. At, at the end of the day, when it comes to the reputation side of things, think of like Yelp. When, when people get on Yelp, they don't go on Yelp to like, oh my God, this was an amazing place to eat. They get on Yelp to say, this is a shitty ass XYZ, <laughs> never go there again. So same thing with you servicing companies. You are so going to get me. My sailor mouth is going to come out here Sweet. really soon. That's what I'm we're like, here for. Trying Paleo. to be good. Be, be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentic. Yeah. No, but my point being is, if you've got people talking good about people for zero benefit, it's not like I get anything from saying, hey, go, go see August RI other than them still not sponsoring our event. Yeah. Silence. Anyway. What, what did we get? We got. I don't know. <laughs> I love a third party. No, but anyway, my point yeah. being is if you're going to talk yeah. good about somebody, that yes. means there's something to be said there. Like yeah, if no, I get absolutely. zero benefit yeah. of saying recommending, yeah. then you know it's a genuine, hey, it go is. check them out. It is. Yeah, go check them out. So those are, those are the three that I really need to see. Mm -hmm. um, or anybody, you know, if you're going to sell your note or you want to have a good product, make sure that you're using these three professionals. That's a good question, um, David Fair. Are you telling the borrower that you are doing two notes with two different amortization schedules up front when you're selling? Sure, absolutely. There's no reason not to. Um, you know, again, this goes back to the whole thing, oh, I can charge them $20,000 over the actual price of this house because they're desperate. You know, when, it, when you're negotiating these deals with them, why did I do you know 30 years and then 15 years on the second? You can do 30 and 30. Mm -hmm. um, you know I like to have if you're going to hold on to that second for cash flow, I like to have a higher dollar amount there. But maybe that that doesn't work in with where the rental or where mm -hmm. their payment needs to be. Again, when you're setting up these owner finance transactions, you can do you can set it up any way you like. You can change the term. Right. And you know please don't go over 30 years. And for, you know, for, yeah. th I've seen them at we, 35 and 40. We did a Don't Grant Teach Me Something video where Grant pulled out a Tim B. Do calculator, calculator, yeah. calculator, calculator. That one. Yeah. Where and just to show how you should pick where you're at. Uh, we'll tag it one of these days yeah, no, if, if we can find it. But it, yeah, don't be it, absurd. Yeah, it, can you do it? Of course, you can do a 40 year note. Right, um, but can I, you be defaulted on that too? Yeah, I mean, but 40 years, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's just stay with the industry standard, 15, 20, 30. Right. Um, do I see some that come in and they're like 16 years and I'm like, why did they pick this weird 16 year mark? I mean, make it 15 or 20. Right. Um, it just throws people for a loop and it kind of makes it go, do you, does this person know what they're doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, and that's, that's the only a, thing. Can tip. you do it? Stay, Can you, stay yeah. within the norm stay so you don't look like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, if you're planning on keeping this thing for 30 years, great, you uh -huh. know, but things happen and you might want to sell it. So don't look like an idiot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you do what's normal, you won't look like an idiot. Again, you can do anything and set it up however you want. <laughs> um, title policies. Get your title policies. That protects everybody. I don't. Like, I get that you can do your own <laughs> title work and you can kind of just you know, sell a house in the back of a, a Burger can. King back bag or something, but. But why, why would you yeah. do this? Why? I, the Protect title policy yourself. protects yourself. 
protects your borrower, which in owner finance, your borrower becomes kind of like your partner, mm -hmm. right? You want them to succeed in this. Um, I know the business model, you know, where people are basically setting them up to fail so that they can just keep taking that house back yeah. and getting another $10,000, but and, and it's, also, not a, it's not a good business if model. If you use a title policy, it's almost like having a third party report card on Correct. what you're doing. Because if you're ever looking for private capital, if you're ever looking to expand your business, have JV partners, first thing they're gonna say is, well, what have you done? Be like, well, I've done this, I've done that, here's my rental Lambo. They're gonna be like, okay, well, show me a HUD. And they're like, well, I don't have any I didn't get a HUD uh, here's, because- Here's the my Burger King bag. <laughs> they're gonna be like- Yeah, what? That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't but if you can show HUDs, that's like that's like a almost like a third party report card. Well, yeah, because the HUD is gonna be sent. The HUD goes to the government. So yeah. yes, you want to definitely have closing statements on all of this. But title policies, a lot of people. And I should also say this: if you don't have that title policy, ask the attorney that closed the deal that you paid for that title policy. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it exists because you're gonna want that down the road. And if it was never, and I just know because I've had a couple investors run into this, where uh, that title policy, there was a commitment, but the policy was never purchased. Um, when I buy these things, majority of them don't have title policies on them, but the seller of a note has to purchase title. If you do it at the beginning with your owner finance transaction, mm -hmm. you can have the borrower pay for it. You know, and even if they don't have enough cash to come to closing, you can roll that into the loan if you want to. So always make sure, and the mortgagee, of course I'm looking for a mortgagee title policy, not mm -hmm. just the borrower's title policy. So mortgagee title policy will transfer with the loan. Sweet. Very nice, goes with the loan. You had me at use a title company, get a title policy. I know, well, I feel like I have to say it to everybody because nobody, <laughs> nobody likes doing it. Who, who are these nobody? I, Everybody I, I know does it. Not for owner, tri owner finance oh, yeah, transactions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, owner finance true. transactions, yeah. they're like, oh, we don't need it. Wild, wild, yeah. wild west. Guess what? You need it. Yeah. Um, record the warranty deed and of, deed of trust. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no reason. And Scott Horn will tell you this because I listened to him talk about this tons. He, he said, if you're going to foreclose on them, you still have to go through the foreclosure pro process mm -hmm. once you have created a deed of trust and warranty deed. Because just because it's not recorded does not mean that, oh, I can now just go evict them like they were a bad renter. Right, right, right. Okay, you don't have a lease, you have a deed of trust and a warranty right. deed, just, which shows that they own it. Just because so, you're no. trying to be all back room doesn't mean you can be all back yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and record them. Right. Um, you know, people are always uh, worried about the due on sale clause, and that's why they don't record a warranty deed. Mm -hmm. um, for everybody who doesn't know, a due on sale clause, let's say you have a loan with, I don't know, Chase, right? I don't, are they still doing loans? I don't, even, I don't know. Whoever. Wells Fargo you, was doing a bunch of them. So let's bank say. Bank One, they're still Bank One, right? yeah, yeah. Any of those big banks. Bank right? One is out. Didn't they go out of business like 10 years ago? I don't know. Anyway. Well, I'm, not doing that. I'm not doing that anymore. But <laughs> I have no idea. So anyway, so let's say you've got a mortgage with um, Wells Fargo and any of those big banks are going to have written into it due on sale. So that means if you transfer warranty deed, warranty deed shows your ownership, deed of trust shows who owns the debt. So if you transfer warranty deed into the name of your borrower, they have the option, not the obligation, but the option to do the due on sale clause. Right. In literally hundreds of these things that I've been involved with, I have never seen it happen. And I did, I wrapped one of my own um, with Bank, Bank of America. Mm -hmm. Got a call one day with Bank of America and they said, uh, we notice you don't own this house anymore. Um, and I go, no, I don't. And I was like, okay, here it comes. Here it comes, you know, they're gonna call my note to. And they basically just said, are you gonna keep making your payments? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. And they go, okay. And, yeah. and <laughs> that was the conversation with Bank of, and this is Bank of America, right. you know, they don't care. They well, just want their money. Daniel had, he had a good, uh, cause people ask that question, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? I well, got, there, there's a way, there's right. a way to save it. Well, so your deal doesn't die just because of that. Yeah, Daniel's 
gone through it two or three times and he's way better, but I'll paraphrase. But basically you have a straight up conversation with him saying, hey, when I got this note, the house was crappy, the, ho the thing was falling apart, blah, 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 blah. If you like, I've put a lot of money into this property. If you want to do an ensue sale clause, that's fine, but I'm gonna go to the house and I'm gonna strip out every single bit of, <laughs> nice. of material that I put nice. into this house to get it to its current value. And then when you do your do on sale clause, you're going to get exactly the property it was when I got it. If you would like to proceed, let's do that. You know. So so he's holding the house hostage. Oh, of course, he's he's it's basically. Totally. I don't want to say he's. Yeah. Blackmailing. No, but you're he, totally blackmailing. But he's basically <laughs> saying, look, you know, I did this to this house for my benefit and my profit, yeah. and you're still getting your exactly. what you wanted out of it. If you really want to mess around, we can play that game. But I'm going to get mine. Right there. That's why I'm like cash for keys. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Always. I'm like, okay, how much will it take for you to just, you know. Just go away. Go away. Go and leave away. everything super nice. Please, I'm like, I will write you a check. Please don't kill my house. Yeah, exactly. So always record your warranty deed, deed of trust. Um, avoid land trusts. Avoid these. People, people are thinking, oh, I'm going to have a nice little veil. Here's what happens when you do owner finance land trust. Mm -hmm. You cannot get you cannot homestead the property so their property taxes shoot through the roof and you also can't get a regular insurance policy on it it has to be a commercial so it's like four times the cost so real quick 30 second what is a land trust a land trust i don't specifically know <laughs> it's it's Just don't okay do it. Just no no don't no, do it. no no so a trust it, it's a land trust is anything that's in trust will have a trustee, but basically what it does is it clouds ownership. Mm -hmm. So you have a beneficiary of this land trust, but that might not be public record. Right. So the beneficiary of a land trust will be the homeowner, right? But you have what's public record is that trust and trustee's name. I'm sure somebody will type right, in and go, you know, you have no idea what you're talking about, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's, a, why you know, but, that's why you have an attorney. That's why you have an attorney. Exactly. But, you know, but I a, say avoid them. But here's the, I love that you're honest about that, uh, uh, about being ignorant about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason being is. I'm not an attorney. What I, I say all the time is once in this business, you feel like <laughs> you know everything about this business, find the closest mirror and slap the shit out of yourself because you don't. There's <laughs> so much, you're, you're an expert in what you do. Yeah. And you, I'm sure you're continually learning, but, but because there's still well, so much to learn. Here, here, and here's the other thing with that. And I, I do, I love the yeah. know-it-all investors who will come up and, and cool. sit there and tell me what they're doing and then tell me how it's the only way to be doing things. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, you're great. What are you, like, what are you, two? You yeah. know, you just got out of college, awesome. Good cool. for you, yeah, good yeah. for you. Putting, putting all those. 73 flips? Putting all cool. your, 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 your college courses to work there. Good for you. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, when you, when you're, the market is always evolving. Yeah. And so we're, I mean, we're coming into a downturn. I think everybody knows it. It's inevitable. We're going to come into a downturn six, 12 months, you know, mm -hmm. and I've been saying that for a couple of years. And, then, um, and, but, and, and, and again, it, it's, it's at that point, it's semantics. Is it a correction? Yeah. Is it a bubble? Yeah. Is it, at the end of the day, it's like, if prices aren't continually going up, it is what it is. It is what it is. You know? But we are going to have to, you will evolve at that point. Right now, it, I mean, basically anybody can make money in real estate. And I remember when it was like that. 11, 12 years ago, where you know it was super easy. Any of about any of us who survived 08, mm -hmm. you know, and survived it, survived it well, you know, and made it through to the other side, you know, we can tell you, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be sitting yeah, with a that, mountain of debt. And on that you know? note, another quick tangent: if you're buying property, whether it be a, 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 a note, whether you're doing a fix and flip, whether you're doing a wholesale, or whether you're doing a rental hold, if your strategy, if your main strategy is speculation on appreciation, you're going to destroy your business. You should be buying property because it's a good deal at that point in time. You should have a worst case, an okay, and a best case scenario in your head. Obviously, you would love to exceed your best case, but if you're buying purely on speculation of the appreciation, you're going, you may have success in the short term, but you're going to screw I yourself. I literally had this conversation with, you know, Joe Payton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Payton. If you're, hi, Joe, if you're, uh, if you're watching, um, he owns the gen genius den down in, in Debellum. Yeah. We had, yeah, yeah, we yeah. had a, like a 45 minute conversation. Yeah. About the other good day. guy. Really great guy. Um, and he and I had this conversation, I don't know, two, three days ago. And he's he said, passionate about this. He I guess. is, he is <laughs> very, very passionate. And he just said, he goes, 
I know you can pay more for it. He goes, but you've got to be prepared. He goes, the drop in the market's coming. Or he goes, what if you need to sell that? Mm -hmm. He goes, great. And, and that is what I tell everybody. I'm like, you've got to set everything up for exit strategies. Right. Great that that's your plan. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So this is a great time to segue into a subtle plug for Propelio because you've got to know your numbers. Propelio, we give you access to MLS, true MLS comps, off-market lead lists, and uh, websites. So if you need an investor website, if you need access to MLS comps, and you need off-market leads, check out Propelio.com. If you don't currently like Propelio on Facebook, Give us a like, turn on the notifications to, for when we go live. If you're watching this on YouTube, click subscribe, click on the notifications that we go upload live. Upload something. live too, so. But uh, you know, we're here to give you as much information for free as possible, but we do want you to like and share and, and actually pay attention but to what we great. do for business. You know, and I always tell people, find, find an experienced real estate investor who is willing to take you out take you to lunch and talk to you and just tell you how to do this or explain things. You don't need to go spend thousands of dollars of 10, 20. Mm -hmm. I've heard some that have spent $25,000 for a mentorship, which in my opinion is ridiculous. You need, you need to be able to have access to comps. Propelio is an awesome way to do that. I mean, you sign up for your monthly membership yeah. and now you've got, you don't only have access to comps, but you also have You've got lists. You've got lead lists so to go after. So on that, in a, and again, I'm of the difference opinion. I think mentors are good. Mentors this, are good, but you know what? But at the same time, yeah, it's, I, I it's, get what you're saying. It's the people who, you know, you're going to go, you hear them pitch, right? They come on a show like this, and they go, okay. Not they here. give you Not here. I mean, like, get the heck, no. And not at the REI Social Club either. Right. I mean, that was why I started the REI Social Club was to get subtle a subtle plug. Subtle plug. August 22nd, next one. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, you know, because I, I was so sick of listening to all those guys stand up and tell you yeah. how awesome they were, how much money they're making, you know, and they're making gobs of money. Mm -hmm. And then they give you like three little nuggets. And then they say, if you want the rest of the nuggets, you've got to pay, pay yeah. you, you know, usually it's $5,000, but tonight, just for you, it's nineteen ninety five. So, So before we get back to more nuggets, I do want to say like, because th this happened like two days ago, I was looking at a house with somebody and we were walking the house and I was tr trying to, after we went to the house, we went to Starbucks and trying to put, you know, giving her about a 30, 45 minute class in wholesaling. And she wanted to give me like a hundred dollars for my time. And I'm, th I'm like, I want the deal. I want the house. You can keep your hundred dollars. I want the house. Right. Later, I was like, Why didn't I take her hundred bucks? I know that's a hundred dollars. <laughs> Damn. No, but I mean, that being said, if you need help, reach out. At, ask people for help. You, uh, they're either going to give it or they don't. It's it's all good. And you help, right? We try. I get calls. I I got a call yesterday from from a brand new investor, and you know she's learning how to wholesale, and mm -hmm. she she introduced herself as a note broker, which I found, and she's never brokered a note, or actually tried, or taken a class. But I sat there and talked to her for probably half an hour, answered all of her questions. But you really love something. to talk. I do love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we work so well together, except we're like fighting. Let's get back to All actual right. nuggets so we don't All right, like. So this is the, we're, this we're is it. We're dropping. People are like, no, no, done. no. Anyway. All right. So most important part of this presentation. So your sales price, if you're going to sell your note, is based on the note value, not your ARV. So you're going to sell at 90%. Does that fluctuate? Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know really what my competitors are paying, but mm -hmm. they're paying a lot less. Um, I'm at 88 to 92 and I try to, I try to do that and stay there. Um, based on a max LTV of 80%, we did that. $100,000 with 10% down. So here it, you were right back at the original thing. Mm -hmm. You've got your first and your second. You're going to sell the first lien for 67,500. Mm -hmm. That pays off your underlying debt, which could be in the form of a sub two mortgage. It mm -hmm. could be in the form of a, a hard, 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 money. hard money. So it's your purchase and your rehab. Mm -hmm. Purchase and rehab money. So 67.5. Yes, that means you have to be all in on that $100,000 $100, house at 67.5, which isn't 100% possible now with all the competition. You know, but if you're looking at this, you took 10,000 down. So if you're all in at say 69,000, you got to throw an extra fifteen hundred into that from your down payment. You're mm -hmm. still walking with, you know, you know, what seventy five hundred as opposed or eighty five hundred as opposed to the mm -hmm. ten. But you're also going to keep the second lien, which 
that is the gold. Um, that's going to get you out of your nine to five job faster, mm -hmm. um, is that long term cash flow. And so you want to get as many of those as you possibly can. People always ask me when they're doing this, do I buy seconds? I do. But I pay like 30 cents on the dollar for them, 30%, because there is inherent risk right. with your second. Um, in this case, it's less risk to the people who are creating these owner finance notes because it's sheer profit. Right. It, it, because on that, I was, you, you have it's sheer profit because if you've already taken the 10% down, you actually were able to sell the note to where the first lien to where you actually cover the underlying debt. Correct. And then you take a little off the top. So you've got your, just your nugget and then your cash flow. Yes, it's a second. So there is that, that risk. But it, it's like it's like when you when, showing uh, and up a, and always getting it, gold. absolutely no 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 and the seconds perform. It's not like you know that seconds. If stop you do performing. your job in the first, if your RMLO did their job, you're gonna get paid. Yes, and your attorney. So there is a clause that you can put in to first lien deed of trust, saying that the second lien holder has the first right to, like let's say that the first lien doesn't perform. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if you go to foreclosure, why seconds are risky is because if the, first, if the first gets foreclosed on, your second's wiped out. Um, but you have, can have put into the deed of trust on that first that you have the first right to cure title. And so I recommend that to everybody. And, and there are also, and I know you're not an attorney, but in there's also language where, where if there is a, a case where the first is going to go into foreclosure, that the second has the right to take over or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's basically what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Second has the right to, but I mean, it's first, you know, they have the first right of ref refusal. Right. They might not have the capital at that time to do it, but they do have the ability. Right. So, again. Um, but, the you know, the number one important thing here is that cash flow. Um, because that's on your $10,000 profit in this. Um, do you have a calculator? What's What's what? 152, four, uh, what's this number? 152 and 14 cents? 152, 14 cents. Times 12. Multiplied by 12. Times 10. Times 10 years. Mm hmm. Brings you your $10,000 turned into, well, actually, that's right, 15. 15. Oh, yeah, you messed up. Yeah. Do that again. <laughs> 12 times 15. $27,385. So your $10,000 now became $27,385, which is a huge right. and profit. Right, and again, that's just, that's just gravy. That's just Correct. extras. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about, what is that, 250%? Well, and, and we, 250 percent increase and, and again, we talk about all the time here, and not to go moto on anybody, but it's like doing, if you're doing this full time and you're doing one a month, and you're making the down payment once a month, and then you're adding another $150, $100 cash flow once a month, eventually it's gonna get real fun. Within, within two years, you're out of your job. Right. For some people, I mean, if you're making, if you're making three grand a year, well, that's some people you, you are, gotta, they get into this and they're supplementing yeah. their income. And I don't wanna take or, it too much yeah, of a tangent, yeah. but you gotta know your why, and, and once you figure yeah, out that, and, you know, and, and then go for it. Absolutely, well, don't quit your day job before you have cash flow. Right. And, and you know, and a, lot of wholesale, and a lot of wholesalers will go do something silly like that. They'll make their first huge check and they're like, okay, I'm out, I'm mm -hmm. done. And I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't quit your day job. I just made 40 grand. <laughs> you go get a boat. So, um, no buyers look for high interest. high interest rate. Remember today it's 11%. Uh, low loan to value, um, max 80. Most of what I see is in 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, good town payment, minimum 10%, 20%, always better or more. Get what you can. Seasoning, um, you know, more is better. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying at the table. I get questions on that all the time. So that's interesting because because we do we do talk about notes a lot with Grant. Uh, with owner finance side, and when you look at an amortization schedule and you look at how much money is getting paid on the up front, up, um, um, up front, up front, up front, up front yeah. charts, like you're making most of your interest the first two years. But for you, you're like, that's cool and all, but I want the stability. Is that what you're banking yes, on? Yes, I bank on stability. So you, you're you're okay with that that the original I bought owner? One, I bought one last week that was 14 years old. Because you 14 the, into okay, a 20 cool. year note. So again, you're, you're buying cash flow. Now, it, it, your monthly cash flow is gonna stay the same. Your principal mm -hmm. and interest payment never changes for a mortgage. Right. But if you look at the way an amortization table 
works, those first five years are primarily interest. Right. That is your profit. You do not pay taxes, though, on principal reduction. So once you, let's say that you don't want to pay taxes or you want something that is, you're still going to have that cash flow, you want to buy an older note. Mm -hmm. Because if you buy something that's, say, 10 years old and it's performing beautifully, well, majority of that payment is principal reduction. Got it. So your taxes on that are extremely low. So, so on one hand, yes, if I'm the original note uh, creator, owner, whatever, yes, I get a larger upfront cost, but there's a higher interest, not interest, there's a tax element to that. There is. But on the back side, yes, you're making less, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's no tax. There's no tax. Well, there you go. I know. So it's so a win-win. It, it's a win-win. Yeah. So six months is, you know, I love six months. I can do it with three. And, and real quick, just because I've been doing this all day, seasoning would be... And seasoning is how old that note is. Yeah. I need to see a good mortgage payment mm -hmm. history. It's basically a track record. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to bring me... There's a whole, there's a whole other, you know, market for non-performing mortgage notes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't purchase those. You know, could I? Yeah, but I mean, look, I think people don't pay very much for those at all. Right. Um, and for me, you know, I'm like, hey, go foreclose on that guy, you know, redo the house or just sell it and take your profit and go. Um, you know, for performers, that's what I'm looking for. And that's what my clients look for. We mm -hmm. want something that's not going to fail. Cool. Yeah. Next. I think we're done. Are we done? Okay. So if you have questions, please drop them in we're, we're just at an hour so we'll stick around for as long as we've got questions and interaction um any any thoughts any it, what are the most common questions you get at these presentations from people um usually it's like well how do i do that because they didn't know that they could set up a, they could break a mortgage into a first and second mm -hmm. and and a lot of times they do have some type of mortgage underneath it. So that's called the wraparound mortgage. Right. Um, you know, and they're like, oh, so is, is it really like I've got a mortgage on this and then it becomes a second and a third? No, you can do that, but that is not really a wraparound mortgage. Um, for those people out there who don't know this one, it, you know, you choose a wraparound mortgage because let's say you have this, and I do it with, you know, a fist. You've got this mortgage, you know, and it's sixty thousand dollars, and you're paying five percent interest on it. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to wrap around it with an additional twenty thousand dollars that's yours, right? But the twenty thousand you're getting ten percent interest right. on, and that bottom sixty thousand because you've wrapped it, now you're also getting five percent interest right. on money that was never yours to begin with. So basically, you're creating money out of thin air by s choosing to do a wraparound mortgage as opposed to a, a and, person. And, and hopefully yeah. you saw what she just did or what she just talked about is, uh, and let's just recap for us laymen, original note, 5% on whatever, it doesn't matter what the price is, but then you add a wrap and then say this is 10%, not only are you getting 10% of whatever you added, which yeah, in this case is 20, is. you're not just getting 10% on 20 and then say this is 50, you're also getting 5% on that 50. Correct. So you're getting 10% on 20, 5% yeah. on 20, on 50, which again is just, you're creating money out of thin air. So, and people ask me all the time, well, why are people selling their notes? Well, I can tell you why I sold a bunch of mine. Mm -hmm. I sold anything that had underlying debt. You know, because when that, when the market does slow or stop or God forbid fall, y you know, you don't want to be holding a bunch of strange debt. Yeah. If it's just, your cash flow and it's you've got you've got notes that are a hundred percent owned by you and you have no underlying debt to them you're in a very very good position even if the market goes down a little bit you've got a good LTV hopefully the way you created it mm -hmm. um, you know and if that one happens to default you're not on the hook for four or five six months because you know that's the one thing you have to remember these people are borrowing money well this is the sector that's going to get hit first with, you know, if we lose jobs, it's not going to be, you know, college educated folks that are, you know, in half million dollar homes. It's going to be people at a lower end because once the housing market stalls, contractors, you know, contractors are going to have hard times, mm -hmm. you know, getting work. And so if they start defaulting on these mortgages, yeah, you might be able to handle one, but if you've got 10, 20, 
you know, or more, right. and they start defaulting at a rapid rate, um, anything where you owe any other bit of money there, you're in trouble. Well, it, it's interesting because when you were talking about earlier, uh, I recently, sad to say I just recently saw it, but uh, it was the Margin Call movie. I don't know yeah. if you see that. Yeah. Where all it was Love was, was a 24-hour period of, you know, shit hitting the fan. I just watched it like two nights ago. Yeah, I watched it like three yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, but what it points out is, is yes, they're the big, they're the big, huge uh, mortgage, not mortgage, they're a big hedge fund and, you know, all their people are making millions on millions on millions, but, you know, one no, mess up, no big deal, two well, mess up, no big deal. But then when you have a large majority of mess ups, it completely wipes out Well, and, and, and in that example, that was a big bank yeah. that they knew what they were doing and they saved themselves, but they knew what they were going to create was a domino effect and right. start the mortgage, and they, the and mortgage they, crisis. Yeah, but they the also took a massive loss in their business to stay alive. Oh, absolutely. But you, you know, at that point, you know, once, you know, because I remember when 08 happened mm -hmm. and I kept buying. I mean, I was buying, 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 I, you know, and then when everything, when the music stopped, I'm sitting there with, you know, eight flips. Right. And I'm like, oh, no. Uh. You know, I'm like, uh. So going back to why would somebody do this or why would somebody sell them, um, there's a there's a huge, there's there's maybe uh, little Billy needs a new kidney. Uh, that's jokey, but at the same time, it's true. Maybe sure. there's medical costs. Um, maybe there's a bigger, badder investment around town that you need capital for, and you're like, that's cool that I've got 10, 15 of these that all make me $150 each. Or I could cash out and buy this mega thing where I could, you know, there might be an opportunity. I, you know, thing. And, I, and I do. I have investors, you know, I, I had one less fall, brought me, I don't know, 50 some. Right. You know, what did they want to do? They wanted to get invested in this large multifamily. But, and they needed yeah. a buy in for that. And they yeah. said, how much money can you get us? Because we need a couple million for this. Yeah. Just to get so bought in it's with just the group. A, it's just, for whatever the reason being, it's basically, and I don't know if it's quick. I mean, if you're working with Chris, and how, how much, if you had a portfolio and, when you, and they wanted to uh, 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 liquefy, is that a word? Liquefy? Sure. And they're like, hey, Kristen, buy all my properties. Yeah. Like, what's what's that proper, What's that timeline? Uh, depends on where I'm at in a cycle with a buyer. Okay. So, because not all of my funds are buying 100% of the time. So, let's say that I've got something that I'm putting together for one of them. I know what they're going to pay so I can start making offers. Um, like right now I'm putting one together, probably, I say three weeks, but mm -hmm. everything's been closing in 10 days. So a, a relatively short relatively term. Relatively short. So if you need to liquefy and you have a lot of assets, boom, uh, that's a good strategy. There, I mean, there is a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into preparing a file, especially zone and finance files, because a lot of times, you know, they're missing pieces or mm -hmm. it's not put together correctly, and I have to paper this stuff to look like bank paper. Um, in files and make sure that I have every single box checked. So, you know, that takes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, four or five days and then I present it and then we negotiate and then we close. Yeah. So. Yeah, Sonia, yeah, Daniel spoke about wraps not so long ago. We, we talk about wraps uh, a lot. So if you check out like the archives and Facebook Live, there, there, we, there's wraps on days on that. Uh, Andre, uh, since it's based on LTV and not ARV, you purchase that note Wait, I'm, I, I oh, should have yeah. read that. I read this part Hold first. On. Scenario question, and you already touched on this, but I didn't quite get it. You have a first lien in your name at 80% ARV, sell it at 100,000 with 10% down. So the first lien is 80,000, and you wrapped it with a 90,000 no. Okay. What can I do to create a first and second, or would, or did, would it be time to sell the note and still make money on the sale? Um, I think the math is off. The, the, I, yeah, there. I'm not really sure about the math. I'd have to sit there. Because the first. So the first lien is 80k, and you wrapped it with a 90k note. Okay, so you're you're wrapping ten thousand dollars, right? You got ten thousand in equity. Um, what can I do to create the first and second lien? Or okay, so if you've already created this thing, you can't unwind it. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what he's saying. If you. Um, you have a first lien in your name at 80 percent ARV. So. Say it's eighty thousand dollar, and then, and you sell it at. Sell it at a hundred k, with ten percent down payment. Okay, so, so that's a ninety k. So you do want to break that up. You want to break that up. So, 
because if you're talking about a hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. and now you've got this ninety thousand dollar note well you've got one note um, because I buy when I buy that wrap note I pay off any underlying debt I, I buy the entire thing I don't just buy somebody's little ten thousand dollar equity right you know that does me no good um, because I don't want anything with underlying debt and then either followed it up with since it's based on LTV and not ARV you'd purchase the note at nine uh, 9% times 90,000 at 81K? Sure. Or are you buying it at 90% of the standard 80% LTV? Okay, uh, so the LTV is, it, it's more of a, it's more of a, a guideline, I right. guess. You know, that doesn't really affect the price. I just can't, I can't go over 80% LTV and give you top dollar for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go to 85, I mean, even 9, I bought them at 90%, but if it's 90%, I'm not going to pay you 90 cents on the dollar for that. I'll pay you like, 75 or 80 cents on the dollar for mm -hmm. that. So it really the LTV that you want your loan to value is that you know Mr. Mr. Avilas, um, the loan to value is to make sure that there's enough because because investors are always like oh but you know I've got this great note and it pays all the time right but there's always that what if what if it goes bad mm -hmm. well. It, if the note goes bad, I need to be able to foreclose on that borrower, which I'm going to lose probably six, sometimes more, if they file you know, bankruptcy. If they file bankruptcy on me and I have to hire a federal attorney for that, it could be nine months. That was I had it happen one time, and it took me nine months to get that house back. Um, I have to be able to sell that house to pay, you know, pay me back for my 90% of whenever, mm. whenever that unpaid principal balance was. So that's the 80% of LTV that you're looking for. It's just the security. And, and, a, and a lot of, it goes back to summarize what this whole talk was about was the reason you're structuring it and reason this whole presentation the way it was, was so once you've structured it, you can seek out someone like a Kristen in your network or but you're actually not required Kristen. To. You're not required to. Right. You, you, you can hold this forever. Yeah, you don't have to sell it. But if you were wanting to cash out, you need to use the RMLOs. You need to have the attorneys. You need to have the title policies. You need to have the due diligence. And, and, there's, so, and there's somebody out there sitting there looking at this going, ha, oh, ha. but you know what? I'm never going to want to sell any of these. You right. know what? It's hard to, yes. If you want to own the entire DFW Metroplex, you never want to sell something. Well, but we were, it's, we were, you know, we were joking in the office the other day because there was a property that, uh, and I, again, I can't remember the specifics because it was more like a couple months ago. But uh, uh, where Daniel was like the actual, he was the, the borrower. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was the owner financed E, what is it? The owner financed. The buyer. The buyer. the buyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, he, but and he's, but he's the buying, owner, a, the yeah. owner was giving him payments, yeah, which yeah, yeah. awesome. Well, By the was, way, go do it. The, he was the giving the owner payments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. The, the funny situation about that was the, the, the seller didn't use Narl Malo, didn't use this, didn't use this. So the paper, where Daniel, who's fairly successful, the paper that note was on was, I'm not gonna say it's worthless, but you would never buy it at top dollar because the, all those things that Kristen was going through weren't utilized. That's correct. So if you wanna get top dollar, you gotta use top dollar services. You do, you know, and I have, I do have ways around it, but mm -hmm. all of that costs money. It's not free. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it depends on who's there. Liquidate. That's the word I've been using. Liquidate. Not liquefy. Thank Liquidate. you, Jacob. I'm yeah. an idiot. Ryan, <laughs> hashtag Ryan's an idiot. Hashtag as usual. Anyway. No, I, seriously, it's you don't have to. What I talk to investors about is exit strategy mm -hmm. because the market is always evolving. You do not know what this market is going to be a year from now. We, none of us do. None of us has a crystal ball, mm -hmm. you know, and so protect yourself. If you're going to do owner financing, do it right. Make good paper. Right. And maybe, yes, you want to hold on to it. But what if you borrowed from, say, a family member and they want to be paid back for whatever you've wrapped? And this happens all the time. And so then I have somebody, you know, calling me up desperate because they need to sell their note and they didn't set it up correctly, mm -hmm. you know, and so now they've got this high, you know, LTV on this thing, and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry, I can't do 90. Right. And I, I you know, I teach investors how to do this because I want to see a bunch of people succeed at this. <laughs> you know, because if everybody's out there, if everybody's out there succeeding, uh -huh. then I've got a lot more product to buy out there. Right. And, you know, it's, 
It, it's good. I think it's good business to help people succeed. It's it's the abundance mentality versus the competition. Well, yeah, yeah. A beautiful was it? What was it? A beautiful mind where he said oh. he did his you know. This is the Russell Crowe movie. I know who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I know, and I just he, seen it and that's what he said. He he expanded on Adam Smith's, oh. pri, pri, you know, principle of Capitalism. doing what's good for yourself, but also what's do, good for the group. Right. And so, if you look at it as a whole, you can go, okay, everybody needs to succeed because if we are a stronger community, we can all be, you know, do more. Sonia, I love that hashtag. Ryan gets a free pass. <laughs> uh, Jacob, love you too, man. Um, real quick, think of last something, your last thoughts. I do want to point out that, you know, there are some takeaways that are go all the time in real estate. One is everything, it depends. Every question about real estate can be answered with, it depends. It's a good deal. It depends. Um, reputation. Always make sure your, your reputation is there. Uh, side note to that is, don't be a dick because if you're if, if you are and you are to the wrong person guess what your reputation gets screwed very quickly and as that guy yesterday found out that literally like I, I, I'll show you, you after know, this it, you're gonna it, laugh your butt off but it, your reputation can go there, like and that there, there are you know I always tell people hey, use agreements use mm -hmm. contracts okay even amongst friends even when you know know what's going on and everything's because it doesn't there's no confusion going down the road. Right. There's no, oh my gosh, yeah, we, we agreed upon this. No, we agreed upon this. Always use a contract. Right. Okay? Even if it's just a one page Word doc, you know, you both sign it, you both have a copy of it so that you know what was there. Don't try to cut anybody out. You know, and, and I I have to tell people, hey, you know what? We're gonna have an agreement. I keep track of, you know, because I've got a lot of bird doggers out there now. Mm -hmm. And I just tell everybody, hey, you know what I'm gonna pay? bring me as many notes as you possibly can because I'm always buying. Mm -hmm. um, we can eat, and I go, we can do whatever you feel comfortable with. You want to assign it to me, your seller is going to know what you're making on it. If you want to do something like we can just do a separate agreement on the side that you know my attorney has and you and I both have, then it'll just go on my closing statement, you know, and it's kind of kept secret. I, but I, I go, I will pay you in perpetuity because it's happened to me before where people have cut me out of a deal yeah. or, or taken my clients. You Basically, know, it goes back don't to do that. trust but verify. I um, love that. And then my last, trust but verify. <laughs> but then my last thing is, you know, everyone's full of crap. So just, be, you know, realize that. And, it, but it and goes back to the trust but you verify. You know, and it's good to be motivated by people who come up and say that um, until you realize that they're full of shit. You know what I'm talking about? Got her. Yeah, you did. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, no, it's it, I, I love the people, and and I'm like, wow, this guy sounds great, 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 and then five minutes into his little talking about how awesome he is, and, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh wait a minute, no, mm -hmm. this guy didn't do any of that. I'm like, okay, this guy's full. My of my favorite thing to do is is find if you got a new person in the business and you're talking talking to somebody and they and they're this, they're that, go find yourself who's been in this business for I don't know five plus years and be like hey what do you think of joe smith or i don't know if there is a joe smith but a joe schmo and if their face like twitches for a second <laughs> and they're like oh I, you know i don't really know that person very well they're being very political and uh -huh. they're, they're trying not to get in trouble uh-huh so, no that's so true that's <laughs> so true that's i mean i mean and, and and by the way it is a small world and if you go and try to cut somebody out of a deal i go yeah. they will find out about it oh yeah so don't do that. I mean, if you take somebody's deal or you try to go yeah. knock on the door of the homeowner or whatever and snake it from him, everybody will know who bought that house. It's a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. So don't go do something silly like that. So going back to the note side of things, um, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, what are you looking for? Um, what can we do to help you, et cetera, et cetera? Um, send me an email. Mm -hmm. um, I am always looking to buy notes, always. Um, I've got a very lofty goal this year, so as many millions of dollars of notes that I can buy would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I need closing documents, mm -hmm. including HUD ones, including copy of a note, warranty deed, deed of trust. In, in, in terms of when you're buying? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I could say I can give you closing documents just for the hell of it. Yes. But that's Thank not going to do any good. No, no, no. If you want to sell me a note. Th that's what I need. I need closing docs. I need your RMLO packet. Mm -hmm. um, usually the first thing I ask for, mortgage payment history. 
Mm-hmm. I just want to see that the thing is performing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do have one more question. Well, thank you, Hugo, for, for the uh, uh, kind words um, that we try. Um, <laughs> uh, Kenna, how important is the borrower credit info uh, to you as a note buyer? Um, so I have buyers who don't care about it. I have fund buyers who don't care about it. I have fund buyers who care a lot about it. Um, I know that I pull credit, by the way, on every single note Mm -hmm. that I buy. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I do. Um, So I pull credit and I do a BPO appraisal on every single note. What's that? A BPO, it's Mm -hmm. a broker's uh, price opinion. Um, It's basically a desktop appraisal, although they do do drive-bys, so I will get, you know, exterior photos of the house. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because it's a mortgage note, uh, you know, if Bank of America showed up at your front door and said, hi, we're going to sell this note, we'd like to come around and walk around your house, you'd be like, get the hell right. off my porch. What the hell's and wrong? What the, hell, what the hell's wrong with you? No, you're not coming to my house. So, and it's the same deal for me. You know, so I don't get to see what the insides of these houses look like. They could be a complete wreck. We have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but as far as borrower credit, yeah, I, you know, have I sold notes that had a 400 credit score? Yep, I have. Have I sold notes that, you know, um, had 700, 750? I've sold those as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it just, the answer is it depends. Um, And my... Yeah, yeah, you see it? It depends. It depends. So, if you send that to me, I've literally gotten top dollar in both scenarios. So, that's not going to, that will, yeah, they don't like my, they don't like my email address. Oh. Yeah. Whoops. (laughs) I <laughs> tried so, to post your email and, and the so Facebook you, blocked you. <laughs> yeah, Facebook blocked me on it. I'm, I'm actually thinking about like just, I don't know. I'm like totally revamping yeah, my Facebook page. because I, I called them. They, they can't fix it. Um, it's up on the screen. Do we have this up here? Yeah, can you throw that on the screen, Trey? Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, um, yeah, so as far as credit score, no, don't worry about that. Um, I do pull it. Um, I like to see, you know, you don't want your DTI to be at like, Oh, by the DTI, debt to income. Um, you don't want your DTI to be, you know, 75% or anything mm-hmm. like that. You want it to be somewhere realistic um, because at 75%, you know, they're basically bankrupting. Right. You know, and you don't want anybody to bankrupt. So, so any more questions? Any more thoughts? We've been doing this. We could do this all day because I yep. love chatting with you. I love you. You know, we, we <laughs> like once every three <laughs> weeks, we jump on the phone for like a quick two minute call and turns into a two hour conversation. Yeah. You know, it's fun. Uh, Get a hold of her, shoot her an email. You're looking for notes, you're looking for deals. REI Social Club is in August. August 22nd. At Fort Worth or Dallas? Dallas. Okay. This one's in Dallas. It'll be at the Social House in Uptown, unless, and stay tuned for it because I might be moving locales because last time I pulled a Ryan Harper. It wasn't as good as a Ryan Harper, but I got over 600. So, Sweet. You know, registrations. There you go. Yeah, you know. So uh, you've got that August 22nd. Um, July 10th, which is Tuesday, um, if you are in the DFW area, if you are in the state of Texas, if you are in New Mexico, Oklahoma, <laughs> Arkansas, Louisiana, if you're within like a three to five hour drive, come and hang out with us. We've got, we'll have four to 600 people there. And come see me. I come find the Capricorn booth. Like I was going to do it for you, but you plugged yourself. Anyway, come say hi I to Chris. And if sh- you I have questions, myself there you the go. Time. <laughs> if you have more questions about the content we just talked about today, hit her up there. You can hit her up in the comments or you can hit her up in person July 10th. Um, we've got a, a ton of presenters. We've got a DJ. We've got live a music. Live music. And that is so stupid. You're just awesome. I know it's funny. It's You're awesome. totally awesome. You know um, I free that. booze, free food, free everything. The event's free. Uh, come hang out with and us. And by the July way, 10th. for all vendors who are out there, um, I got to tell you, you're missing the boat. <laughs> You're missing the boat if you do not come and sponsor a Propelio event. Oh, no. They are. They're fun. Oh, they're no. fun. They're great. Everybody loves them, has a great time. Hundreds <sighs> upon hundreds of people. I mean, your exposure is unreal. Well, what, what I find, it, it, forgive me real quick for the <laughs> two people watching this severity, but like, you, you know, the whole you can bring a horse, to, a horse to the trough, but you can't get him a drink. Yeah. It's like, we're bringing the ocean to, well, the ocean's bad because ocean. that's salt water. We're bringing the lake to the horse. You do and your the first, horse. okay, this man <laughs> does his first event in Dallas and gets, what, it was over 700, I think, by Register, the time. Registered, 800 or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. I mean, and so when you're, 
you know, and if we, you're in the event world, it's if you're in fun. the event world, it's pretty freaking impressive. Yeah. So, um, basically, what she's saying is, come to the event. We'll I see have an event. I have an event, which I'm like freaking proud of, and I'm yeah. like, and this man just, you know, comes in there and he's it's like, a team, yeah, I got team effort. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you Tuesday. If you have more questions, if you like what you saw, please like it. Please comment below. Uh, please ask those questions. Keep the conversation going. Hit up Kristen. Go check out her Facebook page, and that's about it. You got anything else? Bye. Uh, nothing. Cool. We'll see you later, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend.